Hey everybody, this is Andrew Roboto here, and today I would like to do part two of this 2004 Red Sox yearbook review video. So, um, so, uh, so where we're going to start, sorry that I stumbled on my words, where we'll be starting is we'll be picking up where we left off, which is on the Pawtucket Red Sox section, which I briefly showed this in part one. If you want to pause to take a look at it, you can. It just shows the roster and the schedule, the 2004 schedule and whatnot. And that's 2003 record. Which Pawtucket Red Sox won 83 and 61 in 2003. And if I forgot to mention in the last video, um, I don't know what I did. Actually, never mind, I didn't mention it. I almost thought I forgot to mention the other but minor league teams, but I just remembered I haven't gone through it. But anyways, Pawtucket Red Sox finished 2003 and finished 83 and 61 in 2003. Next one is the Portland Sea Dogs. They finished 72 and 70 in 2003. I'm showing you the roster and the schedule, which is nothing special. Not really special to me, but maybe it's special for a couple people and not really for me because I don't really follow the minor leagues. I've heard of a couple of the t I've, I've heard of a couple of the teams though. But I'm just not familiar with them. I know the Pataka Red Sox are now the Worcester Red Sox. I know that for a fact. Alright, next one's Sarasota Red Sox. They finished sixty three and sixty nine in two thousand three. Next one's the Augusta Green Jackets, which if you noticed, um, as I did a couple more of these review videos, you'll notice that the farm stats section changes because um, some of the teams they got rid of, some of them they moved, like the Pataka Red Sox, I know, moved to Worcester. That's the only fact I know of. Okay, the Augusta Green Jackets finished 72-70 and 70 in 2003. Okay... Just gonna show you the schedule and whatnot. Gulf Coast Red Sox. That's the next one. The Gulf Coast Red Sox. They finished 33 and 26 in 2006. Lowell Spinners, another team I'm familiar with because um, cause I've actually gone to both the Lowell Spinners and the Pawtucket Red Sox games, so I'm well familiar with them. This was before I went to the Red Sox games. Then I stopped going to them because now I go to Red Sox games. They finished 72-70. and 70. The Lowell Spinners finished 72-70 and 70 in 2003. Okay, I'm going to read the description right there. I'm, I'm going to show it, not read it. <laughs> It's not really special. I'll show it anyways if you want to read it. Okay. Okay, Cowboy Up. Which, of course, the Cowboy Up was full of 22 of the Magic Moments for 2003. Here's Magic Moment 1, which was against the Rays. Which, uh, I'm trying to think. What was the final score? i got to look at the final score. Which, the Red Sox won that game 19-13. to Against the Rays, and here's the description. Kevin Miller's home run in the 16th inning nets the team's first win of the year. And then this is the description right here. Magic Moment 2 happened, also happened against the Rays. Or actually, um, I apologize, um, it actually happened against the um, Devil Rays. My bad. <laughs> 
for a second I thought they were the Rays, but then I just realized they were the Devil Rays. So I apologize because the Rays were the Devil Rays from 1998 to 2007. Then they got rid of the name in 2008 because the name Devil cursed them. And then they got better. They got better, won the division for the first time, went to the World Series, and got their first playoff wins, lost to the Phillies in the World Series. And of course, here's a brief description. Manny Ramirez hits the first ever home run into the new green monster seats. Description right here. Hold on, I'm thinking. I'm trying to remember scores. I believe the score for this game was six to four, or it was ten to seven. I'm trying to remember. Oh wait, I just remembered. Um, Red Sox won against the Devil Rays that game, six to four, and then the first magic moment they beat the Devil Rays nine to eight. Because I just did the math in my head to count the total runs, and they got nine. Devil Rays got eight. So yeah. So I apologize for that. Magic Moment 3 happening against the Blue Jays. And in this description right here, Nomar Garcia Parra blasts the walk off Homer in the ninth. And the Red Sox beat the Blue Jays in that game 6 to 5. Magic Moment 4 happening against the Yankees. So in this description, Tim Wayfield outduels Roger Clemens, who was aiming for his 300th career win. Roger Clemens actually played for a long time. And as you can see right there, fans holding Roger's rain delay. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And the Red Sox beat the Yankees that day, 8-4. There's a description right here. The Magic Moment 5 happened against the Marlins, which Johnny Damon singles, doubles, and triples all in the first inning. Hmm, crazy. And of course, the Red Sox blew out the Marlins. In this game, 25 to 8, which is just crazy. Alright, Magic Moment 6 would also happen against the Marlins. And this one, Gabe Kepler hits the second of two homers to cap off a huge two game Red Sox debut. Which in this one, the Red Sox beat the Marlins 11 to 7. Description right here. Magic moment 7. For this one, Jason Veritek's 3 run homer, and the third puts the Sox up for good. And the Reds, which Magic Moment 7 happened against the Yankees, Red Sox beat him that day 10 to 3. And the Magic Moment 8 would also happen against the Yankees. For this one, David Ortiz homers twice for the second day in a row at Yankees Stadium. And the Red Sox beat the Yankees that day 10 to 2. Which is a blowout game. Okay. Magic moment nine happened against 
the Yankees. This Red Sox beat them 5-4. David Ortiz strokes a two-out walk-off double. Alright, magic moment 10, what happened against the Yankees? The Red Sox beat them 6-4 to four that day. And in this description, Jason Veritex 3 on homer ties it. Johnny Damon's solo shot right puts the Sox out for good. And Manny Ramirez ends things with a spectacular walk-off catch. It's magic moment 10 against the Yankees. And then Magic Moment 11 was against the Rangers, which the Red Sox beat the Rangers 14-7. And of course, for this description, Bill Muller hits one grand slam from the right side and another grand slam from the left side. It's crazy how you get two grand slams in this game. And he became the first player in MLB history to hit Grand Slams from both sides in the same game. Hmm. This is Magic Moment 11. It's against the Rangers. Magic Moment 12 happened against the Orioles. And for this one, Kevin Miller hits a milestone home run. And that was the 10,000th regular season home run in the history of Fenway Park. Fenway is the fourth ballpark along with Tiger Stadium, Wrigley Field, and Yankee Stadium to see 10,000 homers. The Red Sox beat the Orioles that day 6-4. to four. Okay, Magic Moment 12, we did that one. Magic Moment 13. This was against the Athletics. Red Sox beat them 4-2. to two. And then Manny Ramirez tied the game with a ninth inning homer while Beyond High on Kim, sorry if I pronounced the name wrong, is spotless in two innings of relief. Here's the description right here. It's Magic Moment 13. Magic Moment 14 happened against the Phillies. The Red Sox won 13-9. Try Nixon's Grand Slam caps a six-run ninth inning. And the Magic Moment went 15 against the Orioles, which the Red Sox beat them that day 6-5. And David Ortiz hit the walk-off homer in the 10th inning. And the Red Sox won in 10 innings, 6-5 to five against them. Alright. Magic moment 16, the was where the Red Sox clinched the AL wild card. Which the Red Sox clinched the wild the American League wild card after blowing out the Orioles that day. 14 to 3. And then Magic Moment 17 happened against the Athletics. Which the Red Sox beat them 3-1 to one in 11 innings. And Tron Nixon hit a walk-off homer. And this happened in Game 3 of the ALDS. And that was where the Red Sox started their comeback. Because they were, because they came back from being down two games to none against them that year in the ALDS.
Magic Moment 18 happening against the Athletics in Game 4. And in that game, David Ortiz hit a two-run double in the eighth inning to give the Red Sox the lead. And the Red Sox won Game 4, 5-4. to four. And the Magic Moment 19 happens in Game 5, which the Red Sox won Game 5, 4-3. to three. And for this one, Pedro Martinez... Oh wait, did I, I thought I missed something, but I didn't. Pedro Martinez pitches strong into the 8th inning, while Manny Ramirez's 3-run homer in the 6th breaks the game open, and Derek Lowe strikes out Terrence Long to end the game. The Magic Moment 20 happened in Game 1 of the ALCS against the Yankees, which Red Sox won 5-2. Tim Wakefield stiffles the Yankees for seven innings before Mike Timlin and Scott Williamson finish it off. And the Magic Moment 21 was in Game 6. In that game, Tron Nixon's three-run homer in the ninth ices the win to force Game 7. Which the Red Sox won Game 6, 9-6. I'm checking if I made some mistakes. I thought I made some mistakes. Nope, it's all good. Alright, so... For Magic Moment 22... was where the Red Sox lost Game 7... And although the Red Sox lost Game 7, David Ortiz's home run in the 8th was the last for the Cowboy Roundup. And of course, the Red Sox lost Game 7, 6-5, because Grady Little did not take Pedro Martinez off the mound. That caused the Red Sox to struggle and then lose. And then afterwards, many people, including myself, absolutely gave Grady a little hate because we were just completely angered. I was one of those people. And then after that, Grady Little was fired. It's arms and hammers. Extra efforts. Totally cool. Just going to read, look through the record breaking numbers. Slugfest. Golden Era. Save at last. In reach, outreach, interesting picture right there, got some players with the fans right here in this picture.
reality makeover more pictures right here And since we are at the 20 minute mark and my camera is going to jump into part 3 any minute, like it always does, um, I'm going to end part 2 right here. We will pick up where we left off, which is on this page, for part 3. I know this is the first time I've done part 3 for the Red Sox year review, because the past couple I've done, I've only done one or two parts, but this is the first one I've had to do a part 3, because this is such a long... Because this is such a big and long Red Sox yearbook. So yeah, so we'll pick up where we left off in part three, which is right here. In the section touching the mall. The bases are loaded with laughs. And yeah, so I'll end my video here. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you in part three. Goodbye.